comes a bit late to be a perfect tie-in with the recent 3D film, but the video game version of Clash of the Titans has arrived. Developed by Game Republic, the Japanese developer of games like Genji and Folklore, this clash pits Greek hero Perseus against a multitude of mythological men and monsters. Action-adventure is the best description, but the game has enough flaws and shortcomings to qualify as a minor tragedy. You! Hey, you! <laughs> Trust me, you haven't lived until you've eaten a Pegasus. Clash of the Titans puts minimal effort into presenting a stripped-down version of the movie plot using lifeless cutscenes, leaving you with only a basic idea of why Perseus embarks on what turns out to be a less-than-epic journey to stop Hades from destroying his hometown. More than anything else, the weak storytelling is an additional barrier to enjoying the problematic and derivative gameplay. <sighs> Perseus, come with everything you have. With a single player experience that lasts for over 12 hours, Clash of the Titans quickly becomes a total slog, with a design philosophy that places mindless grinding at the fore. The game flow stutters from quest to quest, with each stretch of gameplay typically lasting only a few minutes. Your sense of progress is severely hindered as you're required to revisit the same maps over and over again with marginally different objectives. It's here, we found it. Expect even more of the same if you choose to partake in the optional challenge mode. Two-player co-op is a nice gesture, but it's barely playable due to camera problems and helper warping. And the equipment system that allows the game to claim over 80 customizable weapons is bloated and unwieldy. The gods will always find a new way to torment us. <laughs> Clash of the Titans feels like a flavorless rehash of generic action. While it has a few decent looking combos and one or two mildly entertaining boss fights, the minute to minute gameplay is dreadful. Expect stilted and graceless hacking and slashing and lots of aimless running around as you wait for enemies to spawn so you can kill them and move on with the game. The basic idea is that you hack away with your default sword to fill a blue meter that powers your special weapons. There is some method to the combat, some enemies and barriers can only be smashed with particular weapons, but fighting feels a lot like busy work. You're given few clues as to what the ideal weapon for a given situation might be, but you'll find a lot of redundancy across the different weapon types. Switching out weapons in the menu is a clumsy, time-consuming hassle, discouraging experimentation in favor of a brute force approach with whatever you have equipped. Upgrading the weapons is also needlessly laborious, requiring you to perform quick-time kills on enemies holding the type of weapon you covet ad nauseum. With joyless repetition marring almost every aspect of the gameplay, Clash of the Titans barely manages to stay playable on a basic level. Who's next? Argos will pay. If there's one thing about Clash of the Titans that isn't ruined by repetition, it's the reasonably varied soundtrack. As for its environments and the beings that populate them, you'll see and slay the same old people in the same old places. While things sometimes come in different colors, they never look much better or more interesting. The game's animation also falters with some rugged finishing blows, counterbalanced by Perseus's comical, spring-loaded jump. The world is a barren and ugly place, and you won't be tempted to stay here for long. <laughs> Clash of the Titans proves that there's still a reason to fear movie tie-ins. The individual elements of the game initially seem passable, but in some, they make up a regressive, repetitive game that only functions as a way to kill your spare minutes through raw attrition. There's nothing epic to see here. 